In this video, we're going to start looking how we can calculate the centroid of a body by integration. To be able to use integration, we need to know a mathematical formula to describe a body. But before we do that, we're going to recap where we were with the centroid calculated from regular bodies that we know to, to find the centroid of an irregular body. So just as a recap, if we have a couple of regular bodies, we could calculate and each of these regular bodies, the width of these, we're going to call delta x. And the distance from wherever we're taking moments to the center of these, we're going to call x tilde. And the overall centroid of the body, which we're going to guess is around about here, we're going to call x bar. And we developed a formula that x bar was equal to the summation of all of the x tilde's, let's give it a subscript i, times the delta a, so the area of each one of these then being delta A for 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot to N, divided by the total area. So then that was the summation of all of the delta A's that we have. So area of 1 plus area of 2, area of 3, etc. So we're going to use that concept and work out how we could work out the centroid of a triangle, first of all. So in the introductory lecture, I simply stated that for a right angle triangle, that this distance here was one third of the width, if this is the width B, and if this, this is the height H, the distance up is also one third of H. I didn't prove where that come from, what I found in lectures, I get students who look, yeah, did that at school, and other students who look at me as though I'm an alien. So we're going to describe how we get these one-third H and one-third B, and therefore use that derivation method to get the centroid of any shape. So going back to our triangle, the easiest way we can describe a right angle triangle is if we have a straight line going from the origin and it reaches some point on the x-axis B and this is the area of the triangle and we're trying to work out where the centroid is which we expect will be round here with the one third of the height one third of the breadth. So the value here on the y axis is going to have the value h. And let's just label our axis y and x. And one of the simplest ways we can do is we can use something called the trapezoidal rule. And I'm going to go even simpler than that, although it's effectively the trapezoidal rule, is what we can do is chop this up into equally spaced, honest, segments, all of width delta x. And at the halfway point of each of these segments, we'll just take the average value of the function, so what the value of the function is at that halfway point, so we do it for this one, and we'll convert each section into a rectangle. And then we can still do our summation as we've done always for regular bodies, but we have the x bar equals the summation and again we've got this x 
tilled, which is the distance to the centers of each of these rectangles. Summation of all of the x tilled multiplied by the areas of each of these blocks and divided by the sum of the total area. So, divided by the total area, which is the sum of the individual areas. I'm going to take this concept a little bit further. And so that's how we could, we could, for any shape we like, numerically split any shape we like into lots of, lots of rectangles and calculate any shape we like, whether we given something mathematically or digitally. If we're given something mathematically, we can actually do something really neat. So again, I'm going to draw my triangle. I've got a y axis and x axis and I draw a line. And this is the triangle that I want to find the centroid of. The line here would be described by a function y equals a x and there's no the y intercept is zero so we don't have a, a plus c so y equals mx plus c and we can imagine going back to the idea we introduced before we're cutting this into blocks is we could examine a very small sliver of material and we could even imagine that this sliver of material is infinitesimally small, i.e. it has a width of dx and the value of this center point here is going to be y. We also know where the centroid in the y direction is. So the y tilde for this little section would be at this point. And we also know this distance here to where the sliver has been cut. And I'm going to call this x tilde. I'll just label up a few more things is that for the triangle we're considering this y equals ax doesn't continue forever and uh, therefore the coordinate x coordinate where it ends is b and the y coordinate where it ends is h and so we've perfectly described a right hand angle triangle mathematically so this if there are lots of these blocks, would be exactly the same as what we've done before with finite size blocks, but now we have infinitesimal blocks. So we're going to change now that our x bar, wherever the x distance of the centroid of the total triangle is, so let's mark a spot here where x bar would be, is now equal, and, and instead of summation, because we have infinitesimal slivers, we now have an integral of x tilde multiplied by dA. And we can divide by the integral of all of the dA's, where dA is going to be this area of the sliver. And so... We also know what this area is. So going across here, we know that the height of the sliver is y. And the width of the sliver is dx. And we're going to use that fact to help us be able to calculate the centroid. So the first time we see this integral alarm bells start to ring and those alarm bells are is how do I perform an integral over dA I'm very used to performing integrals over dx I can quite happily extend that idea to dy but I have no idea how to 
perform an integral over dA. So luckily, we're going to take this fact here that dA is equal to y dx, and we're going to substitute it into this formula. So we get from that that x bar equals the integral of x tilde of y dx. And the same on the bottom, we now have the integral of y dx. And I think this is a pretty important equation. It's the equivalent of what we derived earlier. But now this is for a generally mathematically described shape. And this, along with the equation earlier, and I'm going to bring it twice, this here, these are pretty much going to go on your revision sheet for an examination. So now for this particular case where we've described the triangle, so we know for our triangle that y equals ax. So I'm going to substitute wherever I have y in this formula, I'm going to substitute ax. Now I can get rid of this tilde because x at any time when I'm performing the integral is the distance as I move along my x axis. I'm going to actually delete that there. So for this particular case then, x bar equals the integral of x times ax, which is ax squared dx, and divided by the integral of y dx, and y equals ax integral over dx. And now for the case we're looking at, let's remind ourselves, our triangle gets to or starts at 0 and ends at b in the x direction and we're integrating over x so let's put the limits 0 and b on our integrations which helps out because we're going to be performing a definite integral so let's perform definite integral so let's remind ourselves we have x bar equals integral between naught and b of a x squared dx divided by the integral between naught and b of a x dx which performing the integrals gives us ax cubed upon 3 plus a constant of integration, let's call that c1. And we're going to evaluate that between 0 and b. That's on the top. And on the bottom, we get ax squared upon 2 plus another constant of integration c2 and we evaluate between naught and b and because we know that we're evaluating a definite integral the c's will cancel themselves out so we have ax cubed upon 3 divided by ax squared upon 2 and evaluated between 0 and b. So top and bottom we have a's, that can go, and we have x squared over, x cubed over x squared and a two first coming out. But we need to perform this definite integral first, and let's do that, do that formally. So we have a, b cubed upon three, divided by a b squared upon 3 
And when we take, let's say, the A and the A, and we have a B squared and a B cubed, so that one will go, and that just becomes a B on top. That's a 2 on the bottom, sorry. And we finally get that x bar equals 2 thirds of b. Okay, now you think I've made a mistake because I've mentioned it's 1 third. Okay, let's remind ourselves how we've done the integral. Our triangle was drawn like this. And the distance we just calculated has been from this corner of the triangle here. So this is two thirds of B, what we just calculated. And the well known one third of B is actually measured from where the right angle of the triangle is. So we have the X coordinate of the centroid of our triangle. We're now going to move along to calculating the y coordinate of our triangle. So let's draw our axes. We have y, we have x, we have our triangle defined by y equals a x. And our known values at the end are h. Our triangle comes all the way down to our known value b. And we have our differential element, which has the width of dx. And considering this to be rectangular, if the value at this point is y, then this value is y tilde. And we know because it's rectangular that so y tilde equals y upon 2. Again, we'll examine the area hasn't changed from last time, but let's write it down for completeness. But the area of our differential element, so y, oops, dA equals y d x so again we're going to reproduce our formula for a centroid but in the y direction now so we have y bar equals the integral of all of the y tilde's multiplied by all of the d a's and all divided by the total area which is the integral of the da's and we use the same trick as before we don't like integrating over da so but we do know that da is y dx so we'll substitute that fact in we get y bar equals the integral and now we know that y tilde is y upon 2 and we know that da is y dx and we divide by the integral of dA which is also y dx. We can now for our particular case substitute our equation for our triangle but y equals ax and this gets us then that y bar is equal to the integral of a squared x squared upon 2 dx divided by the integral of ax dx. And now we can perform the integration. So we get a squared x cubed upon 2 times 3 is 6. We evaluate between 0 and b. Divided by 
AX squared upon 2, which will integrate between 0 and B. And carrying this out, getting rid of the A's and A squared, as appropriate, we get 1 third AB. So this doesn't look particularly useful at this moment in time. And we need to remind ourselves of the fact that the the why is that doing that? So this doesn't look that useful at this moment in time. So we remind remind ourselves that the equation of the slope was y equals a x. So at the very far end of our triangle, the value of x was b. So at x equals b, and we're evaluating this at b, we have y equals a b. So we've substituted the value for x in. And that is indeed equal to the height h. So this then can be substituted if a b is equal to h we can substitute that in here and therefore we can say that y bar equals one third of h. And this again was measured from the x-axis upwards, so in this case it is one third of h, and the remaining length is the two thirds of h. So therefore we now have both the x and y coordinates, x coordinate and the y coordinates of our centroid of this shape. Next lectures we're going to work on how we can do this for more complicated shapes and sometimes, so this was a shape that was always integrating along the x-axis. Sometimes we might have a shape that is round. It says this is y and x. But we actually want to know this shape instead. And we can show techniques for how to do that. And it actually works out easier sometimes if we integrate over what dy rather than dx. But we're going to show that in the next couple of videos.